Coming up on this episode of the Black Raven Chronicles, the team investigates the Clock Tower Restaurant and Bar in Stanton, Virginia. This location has played host to numerous tenants over the years, some which decided not to leave. And there's this ladle just floating in midair. Heard that voice way underneath. Yeah. Can you hear that? Will the resident spirits come out to talk, or will we be left hearing the bell toll? Clean up. Over here. How old are you, Lena? Did you hear it? Yeah. Huh. What the? And I think that's what was I, retarded. I, I just saw something go across the screen. <laughs> Our investigation today takes us into the heart of the Shenandoah Valley to our hometown of Stanton, Virginia. Settled in the early 1700s, today it's home to approximately 24,000 people. One of the town's more iconic landmarks is the Clock Tower Building. Built in 1890 to house the local YMCA, today the building plays host to apartments, a convenience store, and the Clock Tower Restaurant and Bar, the location of today's investigation. Much of the history pertaining to the clock tower building is unknown, and what few stories we do know are unconfirmed, including two alleged deaths from the early 1900s, one of which was a middle-aged man who died of a heart attack while shoveling coal, the other a young girl who fell down the coal chute and perished in the fall. The mystery shroud in the clock tower make it one of the more interesting paranormal locations in Stanton. In order for us to get a better sense of the paranormal energy in the clock tower restaurant and bar, we had Don Rogers, a psychic medium and co-director of Black Raven Paranormal, perform a preliminary walkthrough of the establishment. I feel like there's a gentleman that kind of pops himself in back there. Um, it's strange though because he doesn't actually feel connected to the building itself, but more the type of location that it is. It's very possible that this is somebody that was an alcoholic while living and is essentially hanging out to try to get the fix that he can't get anymore. The pictures are moving um, and being resituated. But I feel like there's also um, a female that, that crosses through here. Okay, so there's, there's four of them and they all kind of scattered. Two went up and that way mm -hmm. and Two went this way. So, um, adults? Yes. And one of those men, I feel like he, he was killed. And he's not making me feel like he was killed within the building, maybe right outside or around the corner or something, but I feel him going um, around the apartments upstairs. Mm -hmm. um, but I pick him up on the stairs behind you. He seems like he um, is aware of the fact that I see him. 
and doesn't want to talk to me. I get a quick flash of a short person, a child, short. Male or female? Female. Uh, moving in and out from up here mm -hmm. and in an engaging type fashion. But a lot of what I get, her her movement is through here, but it's mostly over there. So she's, she's aware currently of spatial issues in this, this construct. She's following the flow from door to door. Okay. Um, so I feel like she's conscious All right. of our reality. So she's intelligent now. and aware. Right. How old would you say this girl is? Um, Nine, okay. nine-ish, something like that. Smaller than my daughter, but not not much. Okay. Nine-ish, nine-ish. Um, Do you pick up any features like what color hair? Blonde. Okay. Blonde, like strawberry blonde. Not 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 blonde blonde. Strawberry blonde. Okay. Kind of about this length. Okay. Um, all of it's one length. And I can see her watching herself in the mirror. Would you like to do that? Yeah. That's what I see. You're going to tell me it's... Spiffy crew. It's, it's a deal on there. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that, actually. Like, she's aware of the, the, the building setup as it is. And keeps herself entertained. Um, the magnetic like a charge. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, right. Pure pitch. But not quite that strong, but almost there. Okay. And so I'm not sure if that's a, an electrical issue or that's an, um, an energy at play in this room, mm -hmm. but I do feel it. Um, um, I, I just heard a man tell me that it's, it's me. Did you? He's toying with me, so um, it likes the startle effect. Prankster, yeah, the and agitator, he, right? And he's, I like him already. He, <laughs> he's he's intentionally moving, so I can't like he won't sit still long enough for me to get him. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like he's doing that on purpose and is aware that I see him. After Dawn performed her walkthrough, we sat down with John and Kim DeGordo, the owners of the Clock Tower Restaurant and Bar, to hear their paranormal stories. We have found a lot of times, you know, being here, that things do happen. I am not a believer, or I wasn't, I guess, but I definitely don't disbelieve because things that happen here, you know, they're just a little strange. I was sitting there and a glass fell off right from that corner there. You know, our, uh, one of our wine glasses hangs up. And, you know, I, look, and I, I heard it fall, and I'm going, you know, I said, uh, Jill, be careful. You, you know, I don't want you to cut yourself. She goes, John, I was nowhere near that glass. Uh, it was a afternoon, and I was waiting on tables as well. I left the table, walked behind the bar to get drinks or whatever, and one of the wine glasses came out of its rack. It was John, I'm telling you that glass was there. Please look at the cameras. It so happens we have cameras that shoot right across there. So we went in the back and started looking, and this is on camera. We noticed that the last row here, there's, there's no customers, there's no bartender. And the last row, there was uh, one glass. And the one glass, you can see it being hit. And it rocks all the way to the end, and it stops. Then around two to three seconds later, it gets hit again and flies off. And then we looked at that about 
maybe 30 times. It's like, I have no idea how that happened. Now, the other things that happened is we'll come in, we, we used to come in and these pictures used to be on the floor, but not next to the wall, but in the middle of the floor. Like somebody came through and hit those. So we, we actually stopped putting glass in the pictures because they keep breaking. So um, we did that. And then there was an incident with uh, a Cisco uh, delivery guy. You know, they come in and deliver at four or five o'clock in the morning. They got a key and all, they come in. So he came in, <clears throat> started started putting stuff away in our, in our walk-in. All of a sudden he hears a noise in the back. So he flicks the light to see what's going on. He walks in the back and there's this ladle just floating in midair. <laughs> he gets freaked out, takes off has never been back since. We had to get another Cisco guy to come in. I mean, he left the lights on, the door open, everything. He just took off. And again, it's, it's things that happen, but nobody's ever gotten hurt. You know, it's just, you know, it just happens. Now that we've gathered a better understanding of the spirits that haunt the clock tower, it's time to begin our investigation. We will be focusing our efforts on two key locations, the basement and the VIP lounge and balcony area. In the basement, staff reports lights turning on on their own and a delivery man being chased by a floating lady while dawn felt the spirit of a man taunting her in the vip lounge and balcony area dawn felt a strong connection to the spirit of a little girl who we suspect to be the same child that allegedly fell to her death in the coal chute as part of our investigation we gather electromagnetic frequency readings or emfs as they are more commonly known it is known that when there is a high level of EMF in a location, a person can feel unsettled or even get ill. In a paranormal world, it is believed that when a spirit attempts to manifest itself, it needs energy to do so. A high EMF reading could indicate the presence of a spirit attempting to manifest. It's normally going to be towards the very bottom line, and right now it's moved up just a bit. Not a whole lot, so I wouldn't be too crazy about it right now, but Usually, if it gets into the red, you're going to see the light going off. And basically, it's the same thing, kind of doing the same thing Mike's doing right now. I'm just doing a little sweep, seeing if there's anything right now for the first go around. Yeah, see if he detects anything, I can throw this on and it'll give it an accurate reading. That's the good thing about using multiple things. I mean, if you, one goes off and it, it, you get something else going off, it's a really good thing to have the backup system like that, just to show, you know, if one's malfunctioning, the other one's going off too. So I want to show you. I want to show you a difference. I see this has a setting on it. If I turn the temperature off, it's 79 point, 79.7 now. If I turn the temperature off, the milligauss is. See how more responsive it is. All right. See how fast it's moving. I mean, that's pretty, no doubt. It's not, it's not too bad. That's bad enough though. Somebody gets close enough to this and long enough, I mean, it causes irritation, skin irritation, vomiting, you know, hallucinations. I mean, any, if you're close to this long enough, you can see, hear things that aren't really there, but. Right. But it's that when you're doing when you're doing something like this too, the main thing is also making sure of your surroundings. If you get any meter, if you get close to something like that, you know, don't automatically think, "Oh, I got a ghost." You've got to know your surrounding area. To kick off our investigation, Michael and Travis head down to the basement to try to interact with a male spirit that taunted Dawn earlier during her walkthrough. I'm just kind of doing a sweep with the thermal. The use of thermal imaging in paranormal investigations is utilized to help see the temperature in a room as a series of colors. Colder temperature are indicated in blue cool tones, while hotter temperatures are shown in reddish warm tones. In the paranormal field, cold spots can be a sign of paranormal activity. The theory is that a ghost can use energy in the air to manifest itself, thus creating that cold spot where the ghost is. A cold spot does not prove the existence of a ghost as there are many rational explanations for cold spots, such as drafts, vents, open windows, appliances, and other items in the home that can affect the temperature in a certain area of a location. If all these factors can be ruled out, the cold spot in question could be a sign of paranormal activity. Of course, you expect the freezer. 
to have cold coming from it. The only thing you're really kind of looking for is any drop in, t in temperature, something that's really cold that there's no reason for it to be. If you're down here, you can run right in front of us. Let us come and see you. We're not here to hurt you. Attempting to communicate with the spirit of a man that had earlier taunted Dawn, Michael and Travis conduct a spirit box session. A spirit box is a tool used by some paranormal investigators to communicate or speak with spirits from the other side. It is a modified portable radio that continuously scans the AM or FM band. It is believed to create white noise and audio remnants from broadcast stations that spirits are able to use to form words and complete sentences to communicate with the living. Just ask general questions. Hello. Is anybody down here with us? Hello? I heard that voice way underneath. Yeah? Yeah? Way underneath. Yeah? Are you the man that maybe died of a heart attack here on this ranch? Talk to me, please. While Michael and Travis continue their investigation in the basement, Dawn and Becky head to the emergency exit and stairwell in the rear of the building. Dawn felt the presence of several spirits in this location earlier during her walkthrough. All right, so this is Dawn and Becky. And if there's anybody here that would like to speak to us, will you please come talk? Say something to us and let us know you're here. An EVP session is a well-known technique in the paranormal community. Using handheld audio recorders, an investigator asks a series of questions. Sometimes voices can be heard responding to these questions on a recorder that could not be heard by the human ear. This captured voice is known as an EVP, or electronic voice phenomenon. If there's anybody here with us, maybe you can turn this flashlight on for me. It's very easy. You just have to twist it. In fact, you probably just have to touch it. After not being able to capture any EVPs, Dawn and Becky turn to the spirit box to try and communicate with any spirits that may be present. Can you tell us your name? I thought 
gonna crawl on your hand. I felt it. There's something there. Mm -hmm. Did you just grab her hand? Is that you touching me? There's nothing new in my bugs. Touch my hand. Touch the flash side. Hello? Listen again to what we believe is a voice saying hello. Hello? Hello? I headed up to the VIP lounge and balcony area to begin my investigation. Earlier during her walkthrough, Dawn had felt the presence of a young girl in this area. Could this be the spirit of the young girl who allegedly fell down the coal chute in the early 1900s? In order to communicate with the little girl, I placed a couple of trigger objects out that might interest her, a balloon and a plastic egg. It is considered that some spirits may be drawn to certain objects that may trigger a response to them. In this case, the use of items that are interesting to children may help the spirit of the little girl to manifest. I also set up an EMF ghost meter, which can be used to track disturbances in the electromagnetic field. These disturbances can sometimes be equated to the presence of a spirit. After setting up, I began a spirit box session. If you look closely, you can see an orb-like anomaly pass in front of the camera. Orbs are balls of light that are often captured in photographs and videos, generally in haunted locations. It is believed that true, genuine orbs are energy or the spirit of a deceased individual. Some of the characteristics we look for in a true, genuine orb are, is the orb self-illuminating, 3D in appearance, demonstrates some intelligent or interactive movement, does the orb coincide with other paranormal data at the same time, such as sudden temperature drops, EMF spikes, sensor alarms going off, EVPs caught, or disembodied voices that are heard? Dude. 
The Clock Tower Restaurant and Bar certainly has the potential to be a haunted hotspot here in Stanton, Virginia. The mysterious history of the building makes it a challenge to validate the stories of the staff and of our findings during our investigation. Heard a voice way underneath. <laughs> Things that happen, but nobody's ever gotten hurt. You know, it's just, you know, it just happens. While we may not be able to put hard facts to back up the claims, it is clear that some spirits still linger at the clock tower long after their bell has tolled.